Hello! We are live with the Q&A Tech School. This is an emergency broadcast. Again, I repeat, this is an emergency broadcast. I am here with Mike Q. Hello. Q is going to be the host for, tell them a little bit about the Q and Burt show. Well, we're going to talk about today's politics on the first episode. Who are we going to vote for? Awesome. And he has Bert with him. Bert's Bump. a special friend. He's a, I think he's sleeping right now. <laughs> anyway, okay. So today we're going to talk about viruses, computer viruses to be Ooh. more specific. We're going to talk about malware, 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 how do you say that? Malware. Malware. Uh, malware. Malware. It gets stuck on the tongue, trust me. Yeah, it does a little bit. You've um, said it like 15 times already. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit, running a little bit hyper today. Okay, so we're going to talk about myths and tips. So I've known the reason why we're discussing this is because, like, well, the library's computer oh, God. has a severe virus. I mean, the Mac over here has a really bad virus, and it's been slowing down the computer. They can't figure out how to remove it. Um, they're, they're trying to do, com they actually, the virus actually wiped the hard drive for them, and now it's, like, corrupt, and it's a solid-state drive. It's not a regular hard drive, so... The solid state drive is still intact, but it's but it's corrupt and they can't figure out how to wipe it clean right now. And so they're really working on that. It's been out of order for about two weeks now. Yeah, two weeks. And so that's a severe virus. Plus, a few of my friends, like I think five or four, six friends have all reported having really bad viruses lately. Oh, yeah. um, ads just popping up randomly. Uh, unfortunately, Chrome got a little better with security, but they mm -hmm. still have their issues. Well, that's um, another choice you have to make. Do you want Chromium or Chrome? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so we're gonna talk about that, and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna first start on talking about different types of malware because there's actually many many different types. And people aren't really aware that they're there's not just viruses. Mal malware, mal still not can't malware, bud. Malware is actually split into different kinds of malware, and um, so there's several different kinds, and we'll go over that. And then we'll also go over uh, some myths on how to, um, what people usually think about viruses, but really it's not true. And then we'll go over some tips on how to avoid getting a virus and knowledge is power. And then we'll go over, if you have a virus already, we'll, go, we'll try to give you some t tips on what you can possibly do to remove it um, in some cases. So here we go. I'm going to first mention, first want to mention the first ever active wild virus out there spreading amongst the computer land um, via the internet or via just the computers in general uh, was the boot sector virus um, dubbed the Brian. Uh, it was created in 1986 uh, by the Avid brothers and um, yeah it was it was unauthorizingly copying software so what it would do is it would it would copy uh, a software that was real and then it would make a duplicate of it and um, and spoof it as being as being the real software um, so yeah so that that was that was when viruses first got really came to the area before that they were mostly in in laboratories they would make them or they were theorized um, they didn't actually exist yet they were only in theory um, and now we're going to talk about different kinds of malware so and I said it right that time <laughs> you did you did good Okay, so the first one we have is adware. Adware is the least dangerous, and you probably all, everyone probably encountered this. I would not, I would doubt it if um, maybe like 50% of the population probably has some kind of adware on the computer and not even aware of it. Yeah, that's, that's the one where they take what you look up and then they advertise it on every website you go, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. That, that is true. Um, so yeah, it basically displays ads on your computer. It, my, my mom has a really vicious adware that she's trying to get rid of. And sometimes it can be really intense um, and hard to get rid of. And she has one that, like, every time she clicks a link, it pops up with another yeah. window. And, with the uh, let's see. I'm glad mine's gone. Uh, I had one that every time I went on eBay or something to look at something, it would always bring up that one little icon that I was looking at, that one computer thing. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, the previous, the previous version of um, Chrome, or was it like an old version of Chrome, it had a security fault where it would like you would you could always accidentally install this extension. And the, the original extension would, be, would be adware, and it would it would like 
Really, it was really annoying. Really I had that like four or five times on my computer, and I have no idea where it came from. And I'm usually very, very protective about my vir viruses, and I'm usually really good about it. I haven't, I've never really had, other than adware, I've never had another kind of virus. Um, so I've been pretty good about that. Um, and then the next is spyware. Spyware is a software, um, and this one, this one, I bet a lot of people have it on their computer and have no idea. No I am the government maybe even installed it on some people's computers. Uh, the government um, uses a form of spyware that can't, it's pretty much the Snowden deal. Yeah. That was pretty much what they came up with was a version of that. But, you know, most people don't notice spyware because it's hard to track. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, re it's like it's designed, spyware, a really smart spyware, really tries to avoid being detected. And it, it basically what it does is it spies on you. Um, it tracks your internet activity, and it all and it's that one you were saying sends you advertising, directs advertising towards you. Yeah, they'll um, specifically advertise their product, or they'll have a contract with somebody. This happens all over the world, folks. Yeah, and usually spyware and adware are partners. They work together to do to, to oh, deliver you. Oh, see, they do specials all the time on it on the TV. You just gotta catch one. Now, virus, uh, virus is actually a very particular kind of mal malware. Surprisingly, um, and so it's its own kind, and and I um, and it's actually a program or code that does the same thing as a biological virus does. Sort of, it attaches itself to an existing software, and um, and reproduces itself. Oh yes. And so all it does is kind of take up your RAM. Is what it really really does. It just continues spreading and sharing between computer to computer. And sometimes viruses can contain viruses usually contain spyware or they contain adware. So virus is the software that actually replicates the adware or spyware or worm. So I bet a lot of, I bet I even, I even have, I should check my computer for that. Well, I you might can, even have one. My computer's slowing down. Most of the time when you have slow down, that is the first sign. But there's also the problem that sometimes it's linked to a program you downloaded also. Yeah, exactly. And that's the fun part, because you never know, I mean, like, like we both said earlier, it's, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. You never know what's going to happen when you... And I have downloaded a lot of pirate, pirate software, so I could have more viruses than I know. No, the, it depends on who you go to. I will go ahead and warn you, Pirate Bay is the worst one for that kind of stuff because they have been known to have viruses after viruses after viruses. Yeah. But, I mean, it's your choice to do that kind of thing. I've done my fair share. Yeah. Well, the next is... We're, we're going to go a little faster because this episode is supposed to be shorter, but... We're taking a lot longer, but I think that's because Q is a really good host. <laughs> um, and we have a lot to talk about here, actually. So maybe it will be an hour long. And that's fine if it is. Uh, we don't have, we don't have any by me. Rush. It's not like yeah. we've got anything better to do, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're just going to make it as good as we can get. Um, so the next one is a worm. Ooh, worms. Um, special. A worm is also replicates itself, um, but it... It destroys data, so it's designed to get into a computer and eat the data. Um, yes. So that's why it's called a worm because it's just like a worm eats an apple, a rotting apple, so it infects that. And um, and so those are uh, not as common, I would say, because you'd probably know if you have a worm. It's pretty obvious. The worms you are using data. <laughs> how should I put it? The most I've seen worms used for was mainly to gather information through corporations. Yeah. I've never seen them on somebody's personal computer unless they made somebody really mad. Yeah, because yeah, people usually attack people with that worm. Yeah, like, they use a worm. I want to get rid of that information. Like, I guess, I guess you could use a worm if you accidentally sent your boss an email, and you could, like, but then you need to send it to Google. Well, I mean, uh, you just <laughs> got fired and say, hey, boss, you want to see this new email site? I know you'd like it. Boom, instant worm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, then then there's a Trojan, and Trojan according this this these these types of adware I got from an FBI site. Um, so these, oh, this, so you got this, you got the name brands, but then there's also the different types within the types. Yeah, exactly. Which, and so the Trojan though is um, according to the FBI is most dangerous malware. And that's usually the one that's almost too good to be true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trust me, if it's something you really want, you're looking for, and it's too good to be true, it it's not gonna work kids it's yeah. not gonna work and so what a trojan does is it is it particularly goes after your financial information oh yeah and look um, i got one right now something about already? tech no, no, hold on hold <laughs> on i clicked on something and it sent me to indiaz.com and i'm like i didn't even click anything worth you 
don't. This is this is adware at its finest. It's it's, yeah. it's really making me wish that I had better stuff on my own computer sometimes. Yeah. So um, let's see here. Yeah. So like so like they'll Trojan will take completely consume your computer. Pretty much Just most take of your hard over. drive because I've seen people where they've had. Well, let's just say it. We all have movies on our computer on some form or another that we love to watch. Well, this guy had gotten so many that when he got a Trojan, he lost all but maybe two movies. Oh, wow. Out of his whole disc. He tried to save it with the operating system. That's like a worst case scenario. Yeah. But I felt sorry for him. Like, okay, let me see what I can do. So I brought in the old, he, I forget what operating system he had now, but I brought in the operating system disc. That can usually help restore stuff to a point where you can do some, you know, good. But Trojans are a nightmare to deal with. Yeah, exactly. They are... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> They're like the one you don't want to deal with. Well, well, I mean, it's it's easy to remember because Trojans took out... A, tro- a Trojan horse took out the Greek... Or the, took out the Troy. Troy, that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, Greeks were fighting Troy, the Trojan horse. They were using it as a... Forgive us for attacking you offering, and then they slipped in while everybody was drunk. Yeah, yeah, so that's, so you usually get, like, uh, spoofed there, and it tricks you. Um, but they recently found a, um, a new poem that actually stated that the Greeks ran away, and, like, they said that they were cowards, and that they, they never ended up yeah, they, they, Troy, they, Troy won. Yeah, that... I, I didn't understand that battle. I know it's all about a woman... It usually is. Yeah. But I have, you know, it's probably the same reason viruses were created. <laughs> it's like, you can't do that. Watch me. Oh, the first virus is probably created because the brothers were fighting over that. <laughs> same He's like, I'm going to hit you with this adware right now. <laughs> He's like, what'd you do to my computer? Why are you being so mean to me, bro? Okay, so the next few ones, um, and I have two more, and then he's going to mention some. Oh, yes. Uh, they're a little bit less common. Um, Rootkit. Um, and I, I actually, this one is new to time. me. This one's new to That's me. That's new to me too. And it's um, it's kind of like a boot burglar. So burglars use this, and um, they'll use it to track to see when you're not home. Basically, is kind of what oh, the FBI said. Um, that is, yeah, scary. Um, huh. Yeah. So it's. Uh, I, that's, that's a metaphor, actually. Sorry, that's a metaphor. So it's like a burglar, burglar hiding, and then when you're not home, it, takes, it starts taking over your computer. So it's the hardest malware to detect. It really hides itself. It's really good at hiding. Right. And again, all these kind right. of things actually work together. So you can have like a worm, an adware, spyware, and rootkit kind of combined, and they they help each other out. And that's how they're easy. That's how they avoid. Being detected and so forth, like the root kit does the does the hiding and like the adware does its thing and spyware spies on you to find out what the adware needs, um, and so it uh, if you have the root kit, you got to completely wipe your hard drive. So this is probably what they have on their computers back there is a root kit, because they recommend you have to completely wipe your hard drive from well, restarting it, restalling everything from scratch. The other thing, which I'm surprised about the Mac, the Mac usually has a fantastic warranty on them when they're donated. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that Apple didn't say, well, we'll send one of our tech guys from the store. Well, they probably haven't asked yet. They're probably, probably doing that as the last. They've probably been, well, Skyler's been working on it. Skyler is a volunteer here, and he's really cool. He's in high school. Same here. He's a genius. Um, but he's been working on it. Um, that seems almost like he'd be better off to create an ISO file, and I could create him a bootable medium off a of USB, and he yeah. reboots it. But yeah, yeah, and I and that's probably another thing that could do. I haven't gotten much involved with it, but he, I just been hearing from what he said about it. But he's, I think he has to wait on an actual someone else. I think he's gotten to his limits. He's tried a lot though. He's tried doing the boot off of the disk. He's put the hard drive. He made a copy of the other computer. Yeah. And tried to restart it from there, but then the solid state drive got corrupt. And it can no longer format it. It like it's red on the um, well, it's a three terabyte hard drive, and the the computer's detecting it as a hundred and twenty eight gigabyte hard drive. Oh, uh, well, solid that's, state drive. Yeah, that's a, so. How many? How much? How big is the actual hard drive on there? The actual hard, solid state drive is three terabytes. Then it's one of those ones that takes up space because that yeah. sounds like one of the formatters. Um, 
Yeah. It sounds like ransomware, if I'm being completely honest, because yeah. they've been known to take chunks of your hard drive. Because mm. if it's showing up as smaller than it is, that means part of the hard drive has been taken to the point of where you'd be better off replacing the hard drive. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's horrible. Because some, some, yeah, like I think you have that one. There's one where the FBI says it doesn't help to re-wipe your hard drive because it's still going to be there no matter what. Well, I mean, th mm. the only option he would have is taking an ISO file of the latest software and trying to rehash it. I think he's tried it. Oh, no, he hasn't tried it from complete scratch, but I don't know. Hey, maybe we can try that. I don't know if yeah. they give us permission or not. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we got to find out. Um, we'll ask questions first. We yeah. won't do stuff without permission, guys. We're not that kind of people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so root kits are bad. Um, we'll come in bad. after hours for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Shh. We'll root kit it. Um, backdoors. So backdoors are pretty similar to Trojans or Worms. Hacker's best friend. Um, except they like keep the door. They, they go in there and all they're designed to do is to put their foot in the door. So so basically, they, they, they something else gets them in, and once they're in, they keep Everything. the door unlocked for for the thief or for the robber, and they just keep it there. So like all the times in TV shows, they'll be going, "I have a back door into the NSA," or "I have a back door into the CIA." Yeah, and then, then you'll see the hacker just go, boop, 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 and he's there. It's actually been a proven fact that North Korea has made a couple of these actual viruses yeah. into our government systems. Uh, also, the Russians that have been handing over WikiLeaks have a back door into Hillary's email. I'm sorry to say, but that's the proven fact. They have a back door through her email address, which yeah. makes me feel bad for Hillary. I like you, Hillary. You're not a bad person, but somebody has done something horrible to you. Yeah, and this that is, I just remembered that that that's theorized that Russia attacked the NSA, or they released they released NSA, and the NSA is saying that the file the file that they released in the NSA is like from 2011. Did you hear about this? Yes, I did. I actually mm. heard about it this morning. Yeah, it is from 2011, and if I remember correctly, it was one of the. F it was more information about what Snowden was doing, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was one of the early stages of their project, and it also had like all their security information from oh, NASA, but it was like old, so not, so, well, uh, not NASA. I NSA. heard more software for what they were doing. Yeah, I think Russia is actually just trying to figure out a way to keep them from doing it to them. Yeah. But they never right. proved that it was Russia. They just like think that it was they think it was Russia. But they I mean, don't think they don't think it was Russia because they don't think that Russia doesn't have that key ability. I think that someone contract someone Russia contracted someone or hired a third party to do it. Well Putin's been known to hire third parties for a lot of things. Yeah. I mean a lot. Or whoever it was, they thought maybe they were working for the Russians. I, I don't know, it's on NPR, you gotta check that out. NPR is cool. There's hackers there. everywhere, people. Even in our country, they're here. Okay, you have the rest. I have the keylogger one. Okay, yeah, next one's keyloggers. It does record what you type. I've mainly only heard about it in business competition. I've actually heard Enron actually use this once upon a time. Yeah. Enron had actually used this. Well, I think it's used a lot with um, with what the well, spyware. Mainly what they were, spyware uses. Well, key spyware loggers. uses keyloggers to get in. Yeah. And then they stay, and then they allow everybody else to come in. Yeah, right. and this is this is why why after after you have a virus, any kind of virus, you should be careful of a keylogger, and you should change all your passwords immediately because you don't know if you had a keylogger or not. Yeah, because once you have a keylogger, if you use the same password on different devices, they can just hack into other devices. Yeah. What I recommend is find a basic one that's easy to remember, change the numbers and different things. But always, if you have one of those little options where it says the password is weak or strong, and if it says you're middle or lower, I'd recommend creating something a little stronger. Yeah, yeah, if you if you can figure out like a solid way to like, I, I have um, an encrypted program on my computer where it keeps, and even that's kind of faulty as it's risk, but I'm not too concerned about, you know, I, I change my passwords regularly, so I'm not super concerned about it, but if you are, I would keep them offline um, in a secure book, but um, my, yeah, main, like, my main concern with viruses, and I'm not trying to take up too much time, but this is my God's honest truth. Operating systems that are older than Windows 7 don't really make the cut anymore because they're yeah. not being monitored by the big businesses that are antivirus protected. Yeah, exactly. Because I heard XP 
one of the companies the ended quarter. well by Microsoft, but I also heard that a lot of the big time companies are saying we don't support it more anymore either. Yeah. Uh, McAfee even said that a few weeks ago that they're not going to be providing antivirus software for XP anymore. Yeah. But you can still find a disk from like decades ago, but it's not going to be full functionality anymore. Well, technology changes so quickly, like oh, even yeah. like hardware wise, you know, like a hacker can't really hack into an old offline computer. Because their their software and programming is so different than any modern. Yeah, like the, for example, you tried to hack into a uh, senior's dial up. You're gonna be sitting there for three or four days just to get anywhere. Yeah, it's 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 a known fact. That so if you really want to be secure, then use use dial up people. <laughs> use use, use the dial up power. Use the dinosaur computer. But you'll never be able to play video games again. But it'll be it'll save your stuff. Some high profile profile companies still keep their. Private information on floppy disks uh, and like and like old fashioned computers. I've heard. Uh, I don't know that's see. Not, I haven't confirmed that. It, it it depends on who it is. I know. Uh, this is just one of those back closet rumors you get from a friend who works for the company that Bill Gates still has his original Microsoft computer and he keeps oh, a sure lot does. of storage of stuff. Yeah. I heard he even updated a hard drive just for this thing. Well, there was a the one of the, one of the original Macs. They sell for a lot of money, like a couple thousand oh, dollars. Don't even get me started. I want the old clear yeah. one that had the handle on it. I want yeah. that thing just for nostalgia purposes. Yeah. But I, I, I don't get lucky enough to have a Mac. I get all my stuff for free, but I don't have a Mac yet. Yeah. So, eh. Yeah. All well, right, we're going to move on to the next yeah, let's one. let's go to the next one. Okay. Rogue security software. Yeah, you'll see it all the time. I've actually seen one that had a Windows logo on it, but it looked a little pixelated. If it seems fishy, I'd look it up first. Mm -hmm. I would always look up security software first and foremost. I would not, I would not skimp out on knowing what I did. Yeah. Unless it's one of the ones that we've looked up and we can give you information on, I would not, I would not second guess. I would second guess it every time. No, I'll just power, power people. Do research. Yeah, exactly what he said. <laughs> All right. Now Probably we got now we got the ransomware one, which is a, a nasty little bugger. Yeah. Ransomware is. Uh, I've, I've seen it done and it's sad. It depends on who makes it. Some of them can take over your BIOS on your actual computer and just ruin you. They have been known to do so much stuff. Like, uh, what was the one? Uh, the one with the FBI on it? Where it said, the FBI is taking over your computer. If you pay us $2,500 or pay the fine, then you send that money. Well, it's just like a phone scam. You're sending them money yeah. and they'll just hold you out for more. Yeah, exactly. Let, the FBI doesn't operate like that. I mean, if they're going to do that, they're going to give you a warning first. And a lot of these, like, ransomware and, like, the worm, they work together, but they're also, like, viruses that you would only get if someone's personally attacking you. Yeah. They're not going to be like, out there, you know. They're well, a little harder to catch. There are groups that do that, but they mainly do it for the money so that yeah. they can, you know, support themselves. Well, like, like that's why it's, like, and hopefully everyone knows this already, but you, but your spam folder on your computer and nowadays, Google like Google is really good at filtering out spam. Oh yeah. But if you ever go there and just look at those emails, looking at the emails won't do anything to your computer. But if you click on any links they may, but don't don't look to click on the links, just look at the emails. Then you'll notice they're ridiculous. Like like someone in like in Israel needs help, send us. <laughs> you know, like, Israeli send... Jewish man needs help. Please send money. I will send you ten thousand dollars in return. No. And no, you did not win the African lottery or the German lottery. I mean, that's a possibility, but you don't have a ticket. There's this guy who runs this. Oh, I wish I knew the name of the YouTube channel. I think it's like, I think it's like scammer or something like that. But he he runs this YouTube channel and he actually replies to those scam emails <laughs> and he has a conversation with them and, he, and he's so funny. It's like hilarious and then do his chat uh, after. Him. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Yeah, to the browser one. hijacker. This yeah. one I've personally had. I wanted to kill myself what is it? for doing it. It's pretty much where they take over your entire browser, mm -hmm. change your home page, and change the pages you can go to. Oh, that's what that extension kind of did in the, yeah. in, the, um, in the old Google Chrome versions, the first Google Chromes that are, had that all the time. I'm a gamer nerd. So I got Fable 3 for my PC. I got a free copy of it. Yeah. Okay? They wanted a product key. Me being an idiot of the time, before my class, my schooling was done, I look up a, one of the key, you know, it brings up a product key, you know, they said Microsoft had done all this stuff. I get it on. I I can't. I have no control over my browser anymore. Oh my god! And it takes me straight to this page about you should buy this. 
steroids and all kinds of pharmaceutical stuff that I didn't want to touch with a ten and a half foot pole. Yeah. Actually that reminds me of a story. In college, I used to I used to go to my friends' computers and install like software to control their computers. And then I would go to the next door room, and I would, like, be controlling. Well, have you done the command really... line stuff yet? My teacher actually taught me a few things about command line yeah. where, you know, um, let's say you're in the middle of computer class, and yeah. your teacher's teaching you on command line. You could, like, send little messages over command line. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Be like, to the girl you love, like, for I love you. And she's like, who's this? I'm not telling you. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, little sneaky stuff. And we yeah. actually did that. And then we did the whole connect to each computer. Unknowns yeah. to me is my buddy Mel had a virus on his at the point, so we helped him fix it. But it had been sent to mine, too. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I mean, luckily what I was doing wasn't a virus. It was like it was like Team Viewer. It was like a legit thing that would hide the program. Yeah. And then, and then like, I would control their computer and mess with them, and they would be like, what the heck's going on? Oh, yeah, you did the whole Team Viewer thing? <laughs> yeah, it was sort of like that. It was similar. It was, like, it was something different at the time because Team Viewer wasn't really out. But it was something different. But it was a program. Well, I know they've I always it. had a version of the software on Windows. Yeah. They've always had a version of that. It was... Yeah, we actually did that in class now that I remember because, um, what was it, uh, one of my other classmates, Quasitas, would always get on to the... Well, I would use Windows desktop, remote desktop, because Windows, back then it was a Windows computer, and Windows just had its default remote desktop program. Well, what we did was, is we all knew the passwords to all the computers, so he'd always get on Opera. So we get on there. Yeah. We leave the icon for Opera on there, but instead, we made it open Google Chrome. He got <laughs> so mad. He's like, where's my opera? I'm like, and, and, and then we're, we're in there at my computer doing yeah. this at the time. And he's wondering what we're doing. And, you know, guys, computer school is fun. It's, if you're a computer guy, go to computer school. I'm going to say it. Yeah. But, you know, it's fun to mess with people like that. Yeah. And we fixed it after we were all done. But he got so mad. It was. It's harmless pranks. I, mean, I did Just a lot harmless of harmless stuff, like you know, um, make it so that you know, yeah, uh, his music pops up instead of Opera browser, little things yeah, that you know like would that. get on their nerves enough not to make them upset. No, it's what, what was the one we did to Mel? Uh, we changed his browser history. Yeah, we changed his browser history. Uh, we made it look like he was. Uh, I forget what it was. Goth. We made it look like he was a goth guy mm-hmm. getting online every time. We even changed his Facebook account, which made me feel so bad yeah. because he was actually in a relationship with a girl that was really cute at the time. And she, she knows, and she's long past, but she was funny. It yeah. was funny. It's always funny to pull harmless pranks. Just don't hurt somebody's social media. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what, I mean, part, partly some viruses are created because of pranks, but... Well, I mean, um, when you have a girl yeah. who's... You've seen Yes Man. Man. Yeah. She starts screaming about destroying your Facebook page and your MySpace page because she's mad at you. There's a good possibility she does have that friend who knows what he's doing. Yeah. So, okay, well, that's okay. enough nostalgia. Let's Yeah, that's enough nostalgia. <laughs> Is there any okay. other ones? Uh, no, that was the last one. Uh, of, we're going to myths then, right? And we're going on to myths. Okay, we're now on to myths. He's going to mention a few, then I'll mention You have them. any antivirus or anti-malware program, your computer is safe from ever catching a virus. No. No. You are not safe. Nothing other than antivirus software can protect you at all. Yeah. If you have antivirus and anti-malware, there's no real protection it's all up to your own discretion. You yeah, because really because mean. viruses are also always changing and developing. It's constant evolution. And so your virus software doesn't necessarily keep it or you forget to update it or it hasn't updated yet. And so it's behind on what viruses there are. So it lets something through. I honestly think the only way you can actually be virus free is to never get on the Internet. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty much the only yeah. option. If you don't want viruses, don't be on the internet. Yeah. Which means no social media and nothing. So that yeah. hurts your mind. Or, or just keep, be very, very mindful and just constantly do your research on things and just like know how to recognize when something is. And we'll talk about more of this later tips on how to avoid viruses. So we'll yeah. go on to this. So we'll do, I'll do one or two more yeah. and then I'll pass it on to Jonathan right. here because I know he probably likes to be, don't like being called that. I'm going to call him John Kyle because that sounds like the most awesome name ever. <laughs> John Kyle. Okay. Joe Kyle. Um, My name is Kyle, John Kyle. <laughs> there you go. We found a new name for your newscast. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want me to save you that one, so I'm going to go with the spam email one. Okay. Because by opening your spam email in your inbox, you'll automatically contract the virus 
That is uh, not true. It is not going to do that. It's like you said, if you go to any links related to it, mm-hmm. will it usually do that? So it's all a matter of if you're brave enough to click that <laughs> button. Yeah, because when you're still in the in the email, you're still in that email application, whatever you're using, Google oh, yeah. or whatever the, uh, the trusted email application is, you're still in there when you visit the email. So you're not... You're just reading what they sent you, and the email usually doesn't let, you know. And then uh, Google does a very good job at scanning for viruses and its, and its attachments. But if it's larger than 25 megabytes, it can't transfer, can't scan for viruses. So if you receive an attachment, even from a friend, that's larger than 25 megabytes, then I would recommend making if you're if you're very if you're secure, secure if you're concerned, I would make make sure to uh, check that for viruses when you, before after you download it, if you have to download it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm taking the last good one, but this is yeah. one that I've actually seen somebody try to do. Was you have a virus and you try to reinstall Windows and yeah. copy everything back. The problem with that is, is the Windows disk is specific to the operating system. Any files you recopy over can cause problems because you're not going to get rid of the virus unless you actually go for the antivirus software. Yeah. Now, but- if if you have a, a virus that is literally destroying your computer, I recommend contacting Microsoft, writing down your product key, remember what type you have of, of any operating system. Or any tech service you can go to. Like, you can literally take mm-hmm. it to Geek Squad and pay yeah, money. Exactly. We're or two, you we're two guys who like to do it ourselves. It, 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 it's an open world. Windows 10 now has a download tool you can use to get the, like, for example, if you want to upgrade something. Yeah. Well, because some viruses, well, some malware is really smart. So, like wiping, thank you. It's number nine and the eight, nine and the first one that you like so much. <laughs> so, so wiping, like you're saying, wiping your hard drive. Um, Only well, do so wiping much. Wiping hard drive can, will do most viruses, but again, viruses are smart and they can even avoid that. Um, like the big issue with the, that the ThinkSpot has with their hard drive that we talked about. And I mean, that's like the most fantastic hard drive you can get. And if they lose that, I'm going to cry. Yeah, exactly. It's, you it's don't, dramatic. You don't, you don't see too many solid states that high that are yeah. at a library. And yeah. that fast, too. Yeah, so if a virus can avoid being wiped from wiping hard drive, then definitely just reinstalling Windows isn't going to do the trick. Isn't necessarily going to do the trick. It because depends on the virus, though. Windows is, like, like, I've always, like I'm always going to say, Windows is focused on Windows. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you got it from a Windows piece of software that you got from a friend, that might be a fixable. But if it's a program you did yourself on your own side and it's just hidden within your files, you're not going to fix it by yeah. Windows. Yeah, and it's the same with Mac. I mean, both both Windows and Mac, that virus could have hid somewhere. And you, even if you deleted every app on your on your computer and deleted Windows, it could have been still... Hiding, hiding on your hard drive somewhere and you reinstall Windows and it just comes back or again you reinstall an app like he's saying that, that had the virus and you just reinstall it back and now the virus is back again we so might as well careful. just do a Windows and Mac show where we both talk about both operating <laughs> systems for about five hours then, hey <laughs> yeah exactly okay let's go on to the next one okay so a big one that we've kind of been talking about a lot is a lot of people have noticed uh, talking I think have a virus on their Mac lately a lot of friends of mine and I'll be like, I, well, they'll be like, I thought Mac didn't get viruses. Oh. Or they'll be like, I don't have, I'll be like, do you have a virus program on your Mac? I'll be like, well, I don't have one because I thought Mac didn't get viruses. Oh, no. That's... And that's completely false, right? It, 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 it's pretty much like saying the reverse. Windows never get... Yeah. Well, it's ridiculous. I mean, about maybe, maybe five years, maybe ten years ago, that had some, some relevance. Um, Macs for a long time were very yeah. closed software. They was, oh. and this is this is why they tended to have less viruses um, in general. It's because they, they used to be very very closed, um, closed off, and they also they also gotten more popular recently. They used to be kind of Windows was the popular one to have. Windows was the popular computer. So more attackers made viruses for Windows. But nowadays, Mac is becoming more popular, and also Mac is more open. It's more it's more accessible to programmers, and so it's easier and um, more worth it for an attacker to build a virus for a Mac. So now they're they're basically just as common as Windows, um, and it's it's good to be on your guard no matter what operating system you're using. Even well, it's Linux. Also, it's also the same setup with the cell phone a few months yeah. ago from the terrorist. You know, they wanted. Mm, Mac to break the phone. 
they didn't want to break the phone because one that opens the door for and I feel sorry that they got a guy to do it yeah was so that somebody can and this happens on some point in some technology somewhere somebody's gonna figure out how to break it open and get inside which I wish for a lot of Macs that didn't happen hmm. but it's it's a known fact that if it if there's a will there's a way yeah and knowledge is power that's the other side of it the hackers have knowledge too yeah, exactly. It's well, do you know anything about viruses on Linuxes? I never saw anything on that. I have not sure. seen anything on Linux, mainly particularly because... But I'm sure there are. Like, I, I would always say be on your guard no matter well, what you're using. One of the big things but. about Linux is you customize it to the point of where... It's like it's your yours. computer, it, yeah. You can, you can make it... I honestly think that Linux, with enough potential, could do that. And as I always say with my video games, I love Steam... Steam has actually made a copy of Linux. Yeah. Which I really wish I had right about now. And also, if you usually have Linux, people who have Linux are usually software engineers and people who know about viruses. Yeah, the, so they usually are pretty good about If I that. remember correctly, Linux was made by Google. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, originally Google made the Chromium before they made Chrome. Yeah. And Chromium was sort of a basis that a couple of guys took. Because they also hired from Microsoft and Mac, and they said, well, let's make our own free-to-use operating system. You got Ubuntu if you want to use it. You got tons of different Linux options. It's just up to you as to whether you want to use them or not. Yeah. And that reminds me, phones like Android and, and Apple can get viruses as well. Oh, yeah. They're mostly used. Phones are used a lot to transfer viruses from computer to computer. But <sighs> they but they get viruses a lot, well, really a lot too. Uh, also, we have as a myth... Um, uh, you'll know immediately when your virus is, when your computer is infected, and that's not true either. We've already talked about this a lot. There's a lot of malware out there that hides themselves um, and are designed to avoid detection, so you wouldn't know at all. Um, also, yeah, we got covered all that. Um, you got a couple of myths left right. to go if you want to or if you don't. And then we also have here another myth. Um, uh, oftentimes, like, I like people like constantly turn their computers off, and it's not really necessarily necessary. And oftentimes, that can give a, a virus an opportunity to um, on the on the boot up. That can give the virus the opportunity to take over your computer. Um, and so it doesn't it doesn't hurt to keep your computer on, unless you're going on a long trip. If you're going on a long trip, then I would recommend turning your computer off. But if you're not going on a long trip. I think if you have a desktop, for sure, a laptop is different. But if you have a desktop... I turn just, mine just off at on. night. Yeah. If, if, I think if he turns on... I think it's, a you know, really a choice. Um, but, yeah, it does. I have heard that turning your computer off can give an, a virus an opportunity to... to um, it depends put on... itself in a hole. ...on how you turn it off. Okay? Mm -hmm. Folks, if you do the hold the button down, there's the possibility of that happening. If you do it the normal shutdown way, there's less likely a chance. Yeah, if you do it through the normal shutdown procedures, you should be fine. Just don't go for the button too much while you're hooked up to the internet, because that does opportune somebody to say, "Well, there's this moments of closure where nobody's doing anything. I'm gonna slip something in." Yeah, it happens. Um, and then um, when your computer slows down, it doesn't necessarily mean um, that you need to replace it or that it's old. It could have a virus, um, malware. It could have any kind of malware, and that could be slowing it down, um, or it could. Um, your software may not be up to date, um, or as well. or you could be running things in the background that you're not aware of that maybe not necessarily aren't malicious. They may they may be like you just opened up a program and never closed it properly. Um, and so always you always want to go through steps of checking your RAM and doing all these different steps before you just decide to throw your computer in the trash. Um, I hope it actually has a good setup for software for cleaning RAM. Yeah, I, it, it's a pay for program. Some of them. But, Say that uh, again. Iobit. Iobit. Okay. Which, if you guys want, I'll put a link on the page for him so that he can see what it is. But my friend got me Driver Booster Pro, uh, which opens up the opportunity for you to get Iobit other things. They also have, it's a pay-to-play kind of thing. Yeah. You got to pay for it, but you get a good thing in the end. Yeah. And use something that's recommended to you because a lot of like ads will have up like saying, your computer's slowing down, install us. And it yes, it will do things to speed up your computer, but then it will install a malicious yeah, the, adware, spyware in your computer. The best one that's an actual pay-to-play that I've used and I've had, you know, when I had money, 
was PCmatic. PCmatic has done great things. I have yeah. seen their results, their resolve. Made in America, people. We want it. Uh, also, if you, uh, this one's not really, this one I guess does relate to viruses a little bit. Uh, if you delete, you can just delete your virus basically from the computer just normally. Oh, yeah, it you doesn't can necessarily do that. go away. Um, things on your hard drive are still there. And especially, um, it doesn't go away unless it gets overwritten by other data. And there's also um, the ones that are really bad, which you try to remove, and then it's just yeah, like, it's oh, okay, you removed it. it rehides itself. As soon as you reset it, it it's times. right back at where you left it. Yeah. You have to go through the proper steps of antivirus protection. Yeah, just, exactly. And, and this also relates to something private. If you have something private on your computer and you delete the information, and the FBI can still retrieve that. So if you're if you're worried about the police coming after you, <laughs> no, not then so much. just deleting your just deleting your files aren't going to do anything. Even if you delete them from the trash bin, they're still on there somewhere. And this is also good for recovery. If you accidentally delete something that you want, um, they've got restore files got restore that can pull stuff. from your hard drive. Yeah, they've, exactly. I can restore I, your hard drive or restore files. I really need one. <laughs> yeah, because it because um yeah because the hard hard drive works. Is um is it writes the information on like a, like a pen writing on a piece of paper, Very tiny. and so it writes the information on the on this little disc that spins around in circles, and um when you delete something, all it does is tell the computer, okay, that's okay to write over, oh, that's yeah. okay to that's okay to to write on again, and so until that needle comes back around full circle yeah. around that disc and rewrites over what you deleted, it isn't gone. True. Um, and even if it rewrites over what you did, I I think that some stream experts might have a way to retrieve that. I'm not sure. I have no idea. Uh, there's, but I um, have heard like TV shows talk about how they can still retrieve well, it. Well, a lot of the big time hard drive companies have the software. You just have to be willing to pay them the bucks. Uh, yeah, exactly. Western Digital does have a program that they sell. I haven't used it yet. I need to look more into it before I talk too much about it. That uh, that can go into your recycle bin and look through what you've. Deleted. Now, I think a solid state drive does the same thing, right? It, solid it state does the same thing. It doesn't, doesn't delete, it. It, it, it doesn't delete it until you write over it. Again, it's right? kind of like a reverse random access memory. It takes a small portion and stores, okay, this is here. We're going to leave the fact that it existed here. And if they want to restore it, you just have to get to it. Yeah. Like on the ones behind us in the Macs, behind our screen, folks, there, there's a possibility of fixing it, but it, it's just going to require a lot of patience and a lot of time. Yeah. Well, uh, like a good example with like um, a solid state drive is I am a filmmaker, and one of my friends in film school he accidentally overwritten all our footage on our oh. memory card, and it was it was it, we thought it was gone, um, but we ran we ran a recovery program and we were able yeah. to get it back. So so even solid state drives don't completely delete the data, and that's a good and bad thing depending on your situation. And you, you um, so you guys know the difference. The hard drives normally have the big metal disc in them. The normal ones, yeah. solid states are pretty much you know memory all, cards, flash drives, all parts. And they solid states usually run faster, and they can retrieve information faster. Um, they're overall better, but they're more expensive. The only, that's the only reason why they're not yeah, cached on. Yeah, because really um, let's see, my, my teacher actually bought a four hundred twenty-eight gig solid state for his computer because you know a lot of his stuff wasn't working properly. So we moved the operating system over. And if you guys have questions for him about software, I know enough. Yeah. But one of the big things he wanted was a solid state speed. Uh, yes, you can increase it with RAM, but that only does so much. Yeah. A good solid state doesn't hurt. If you can afford it, if you can't yeah. afford it, and what a lot of people do is they'll they'll have a solid state drive on their computer, and then they'll buy an external hard drive with lots of memory that's cheap. Well, the majority of the towers I've seen lately for you know people to buy brand new has four slots for solid states and four more slots for regular drives. What most people tell me is the best option to do is to buy a solid state for your operating system or any programs you yeah. use regularly, like you know whatever games you play. Exactly. That's pretty much what they, they say. And then I always say the operating system because it'll come up like like a snap of the finger. Yeah, so it's fast but expensive um, compared to a hard drive. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Yeah, um, that's basically it for myths. Um, so now we're going to go on to like tips on how to uh, avoid getting virus, viruses. We've kind, of, we kind of already been talking about, but we're going to go into a little bit more. And then, then we'll go into like that. That will be about. We'll talk about how types of types of um, types of software you can use to help you avoid so viruses. Um, so first, one about mal malvertising. 
I think is the most common way that someone accidentally gets a really bad uh, malware on their computer. Um, and that is, uh, that is like um, usually, and then the most common way I've seen is people click on what they think is the button they want, the link they want to get oh, to yeah. the page they want to go to, or the link they're going to to download what they want to download. But in reality, it's a advertisement. Yep. And that advertisement leads to a place that, 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 that either installs malware on your computer right away mm -hmm. or just bothers you with adware right then. Um, and so these, these buttons are really essential to avoid. And sometimes they'll pop up and be like, oh, you need to update your Flash player. But again, knowledge is power, and you really need to do your research before you just click that button and say yes. You need to make sure that it's real, because that is what he was saying before, um, malicious software, software that pretends to be another software. and Just that's, to get to you. Yeah, just to get to you. So it's, a, it's like an ad um, or malicious software, and you click, you click update, and then it installs all this adware and spyware on your computer instead of installing the Flash update. Yeah, it's, it, let's see, I've seen a few Adobe, Flash players. I've seen so many different kinds. It's yeah, and this is on a download. But if you go to like a like a illegal like a, not not illegal, but if you go to like sketchy sites to like get get maybe um a, a, get some files like a torrent torrent a file legally, torrent files are, legally they have a history. Um, yeah, then those on oftentimes are covered with these, um, and they may have like a, I said, Pirate Bay. They've been known to have at least some viruses. I mean, yeah. there are some legitimate ones with inside the programs, but like like he just said, knowledge power, research everything before you, you know, click the button. Exactly. Well, like like with avoiding these ads, you gotta be mindful on where they are because some of them I've seen where they're where they're basically um, see through, they're transparent, so they don't even show them there, and all there is is a little X in the corner. So you have to go and click that X, and even that is a little risky. Even sometimes because, the X can do it. Yeah, sometimes the X can do it, and they'll, they'll, so so you gotta be really careful about that. And that that computers like browsers used to be really bad a few years ago. They used to have a lot of these I've noticed pop up. Virus, computers got a little bit better about making sure they don't pop up in your face. With even kind of stuff, even as I've noticed, happens. as I've noticed that sometimes when I'm online, folks, there will be a video come up in my background behind all my stuff, and I'm like. What is that? I don't want that. So new things are being invented every day. Yeah. You just have to pay attention to it. Yeah. And that and was I, one of my I, biggest problems. I watch TV on this one site, and when I go to watch the video, if I'm not careful, they'll have that transparent ad yep. or the X, and then you'll see it, and if you click the play button on your video, then you're clicking on that ad. Yeah, when um, I watch my anime, when I pause it, there's a giant advertisement in the middle of it. I'm like, what are you doing? I don't want to yeah. do this right now. I want to watch my anime. Psh. Exactly. So it's best to avoid these ads. And so basically, the the new internet is your oyster as long as you have develop a pattern recognition for for these malicious ads and malicious download links that are fake. Um, you know, you have to be able to develop. And that's a skill that may develop over time. Oh, like yeah. I can I can see something that's not that's a fake ad or a fake button, and I can know instantaneously somehow. That it's not that it's not real. Like my pattern, my mind is has developed a pattern recognition for that kind of thing. But but some people they don't have that ability. Some people have just just started using a computer or are very young with computers. Well, one of the other tips I'm going to give you is if it looks like it's Windows and it's got an icon that's oh that's the Windows logo. Look very carefully at it because sometimes there's like a little bit fuzzy and you're like wait a minute, a little bit fuzzy. Should I trust this? Yeah. No. If it's fuzzy or pixelated or has little problems, I'd be that's, careful that's to idea, begin yeah. with because one of the biggest ones my teacher actually showed me when I was learning about them in my class because I, he showed a lot. Yeah. He showed a lot, but the, the majority of them were either Windows or Mac because they even had the little apple, and you know how some of them have the chew bite out of them. Well, this one had teeth marks in it yeah. going all the way down and it had an extra bite in it. I'm like. Hmm. That's not legit. Yeah, exactly. There's and, little key things you can notice in every picture. And it and uh, I when I did a lot when I did research on this. I noticed a lot of people complain about Google because Google even Google's AdWords on the side. That's why when you first when you when you search something, yeah. they have their advertisements on the top result. Uh -huh. That's why I never use those advertisements on the top results because someone could have just paid for an ad yeah. and could have put whatever text they want there. Oh, yeah. Google doesn't do a good job at moderating that. 
And so they, so the advertiser can put whatever they want to say in that Google ad. Oh yeah. And so you could be clicking on something malicious. That's why I always go to the to the to the down to the actual search results, not the ads. That is some of the problem with absolute freedom with Google is people can pretty much do what they yeah. want. And they're trying to fix this, but again, they, people, people figure out ways around it, they figure and, out tricks. And, they, and that's another reason they allow Linux to be free, is because sometimes they see what their software has brought and created, and they hire people on for that little very thing. And sometimes I see that, and I'm like, that's pretty cool. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. So, you know, you just got to pay attention. Things happen. Exactly. We're not perfect people. And now Q is going to talk about... Um, different kinds of um, different kinds of virus uh, softwares. Right? So right now we're looking at PC Magazine's top and free antiviruses of 2016. Now I'm going to go ahead and warn you guys. When, when it says free 30-day trial, do not click on it because one, a lot of the files will do that to you. They say, oh, I want the free thing. I want you to try the trial. What will happen is, is the trial will cut off the software when you're done. You want to keep the software. One of the big things with that AVG that I'm showing you right now has that option. Don't click on it. You want the free stuff. Free stuff helps you more. So right now we have the Avast, AVG, Panda, Bitdefender, Zone Alarm, LavaSoft, Sophos, Avara, or, uh, and Komodo. And I don't really trust the last one because I've used it before and it's been a little buggy. But the other ones, I, the first three um, from the leftover, I would actually give a shot because I've used the VAS, I've used ABG, they are great. Now, also, we also have to talk about Malwarebytes. Malwarebytes has free as well. If you think you've got malware, go to the site, pick the free installation, give it a shot. Because I know it'll work out for you in the end. And I, would, I want to put in a tip there. When you download some for free, again, research is your friend. Because a lot of these free softwares, they don't really pay for advertising. They oh, yeah. don't pay for anything. So you don't know if a site has, you know, if it's a fake version of that software. Oh, you got to no. make sure you have the real version of it. That's why like, PC Magazine is a really good, reliable source. So you can use them as a direct link to, to get, get, to get these softwares. Yeah, and also um, the fun part about it is you can see the software from their page. They have links to them. Uh, Let's see. And be careful of those fake download buttons. A lot of these people, they're ad, they're ad powered, and so their pages, when you go to them, even though they're not malicious softwares, the pages might be covered in fake advertisements because they're ad. That's how they get their revenue, and okay. they they allow those 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 ma malvertising people to to advertise on there. And so just be careful about those fake um, download buttons. Yeah, but my personal one that I've used many times was actually AVG. They do a full computer yeah, scan. They do a network scan for you too. Uh, other ones, we'll talk about it another time. I'll help uh, JK here figure out some more for you guys to post. Yeah, yeah, the, the, we'll probably do like specific episodes in the future on specific things dealing with viruses. This one's an a overview, emergency broadcast kind of thing. So it's pretty kind of much for your information, so you guys can yeah. you know dip your feet in, get a taste. And then we're not sure some of the, what 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 platform. Well, always the better for Windows. But we're not sure uh, if any of these are available for Mac. I'm not, I'm not I know sure. AVG was for Mac when I looked at it because my teacher had a Hackintosh. Okay. He really, really wanted to see if it worked, and it did. The others I'm not 100% sure on because, you know, Another I one, haven't used Panda yeah. yet, but I'm thinking about it. Another software that's really, that's like, um, that I trusted for my 10, 20 years is Clamware. Clamware is a really good protection software. It's kind. Of, it's it um, it also is is really reliable. Um, and I would recommend getting that. And but again, if you're going to do a free software, you got to be willing to put in the time and effort to really make sure you're downloading the right thing. Yeah. Um, if you're not willing to put in the time and effort in the research, then then you know do do a little bit of research on a paid version and just get paid, and they'll they'll take care of everything for you. You know, you get what you pay for, right? So you, if you if you if you're if you're getting something for free, there's also one you, called Clamshell. Clamshell is some, yeah, it's the same as Clamware. Yeah, it's a, it's the same uh, provider. Well, I'm looking at the site, folks, because oh, yeah. you know when somebody tells me something new, I kind of want to know. Yeah. Because. And you gotta do your own research. It's like you said, knowledge yeah. is power, and if you have a, you know, if you have a place you can go and look stuff up, I trust that. Yeah. It makes things easier for everybody. You know it. 
the internet's here for knowledge mainly. What it was invented for was to help people. I, I know people have problems with it, but for the average person learning something, it's a lot easier. And Bert, what are you doing while you're just half asleep here on my shoulder? Okay. Hey. Is he drooling? Yeah, a little bit. His he's drooling. All messed oh up. my gosh. We we should have um, left him in the cabinet. I think he's gonna fall. He's he's been out the whole time. I yeah, he now. hasn't woke it up. I thought he would have said something by now. Uh, uh, I, it's, it's his voice. He he ain't here right now. I don't think the voice is talking to him just yet. Okay, so I'm gonna go over a few more tips to avoid um, viruses. Again, uh, avoid any websites um, that look malicious. Uh, avoid pirated material. Oh, so Clamwin um, is the. Oh, wow. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it's really cool software. Um, don't the, uh, the one you recommended works on Mac as well. The Claymore yeah, works yeah, on Claymore Mac. works on Mac and Windows. Yep, yep. I know yeah, that I didn't know that. Um, huh. It's really nice. Um, New information for me. So, yeah, don't... Um, again, like I mentioned this before, uh, email attachments, be very, very wary when you're opening email attachments. Definitely from someone you don't know. Um, it's one you do know, you still want to be wary. Google, when you upload attachments, does scam for viruses, but again, if the, the attachment's too large, they won't be able to do the scan, so they will, they'll tell you when, they, uh, when, the package, when the attachment's uploaded, they weren't able to scan for viruses. True. Um, and so, um, yeah, so avoid that. Um, again, uh, avoid links on unsolicited emails. Um, you want to... Uh, Hover, hover. If you, a good tip is when you see a link, you can hover over it, and it will actually show you. Sometimes, like I think some computers and some browsers will show you the actual link of where it's going, because sometimes someone could like ha definitely an email. They can write a link, um, and it could say www.facebook.com, but it may not be facebook.com. Well, I've, I've actually had an ad pop up that took me straight to my Facebook page. I yeah. was concerned. I was like. Whoa, why are you taking me to my Weird. Facebook page? Huh. But it was actually a legitimate ad. I looked it up later. Sometimes they'll do that if you're on your own computer and they're like, what's going on? Oh, okay. I'm on my Facebook page. Why am I on my Facebook page? Some of the Facebook ones are legit. I've, I've found them on many video watching sites that I use. And may nerd, accepted. And again, um, um, firewalls don't always protect you from viruses. So if you have a firewall, it doesn't necessarily mean you're protected. Uh, a virus can still get through. So um, yeah. definitely if you say yes to it. So if you're downloading a, a firewall, only like really, like basically it's, um, it's like any wall in real life. You know, people can still get through it. Also, it, it um, usually pops up and asks you, this thing is like trying to get through. Do you want it through? And if it's something you wanted to download, you may click yes. And that may be a malicious download, so you may have just let it over your wall. You may have let it open the gates yeah. for it. So it doesn't necessarily protect you. Um, so that it's good to avoid open Wi-Fi sources because you could have someone in like a ca cafe, Oof. for example. And if you don't have good firewall, and this is what a firewall would help you with in an open Wi-Fi situation, it would protect you from these people. But, um, but if you don't have a good one or you don't have one at all, then you're especially vulnerable to... Uh, a person sitting at a cafe who has a, has a, ha has a hacker. I'm being honest, people. If you're at a Starbucks, yeah. you never know what could go wrong. Yeah. I use Starbucks internet. I have no problems with it. But have something that can make... Because one of the big things I have on my computers is I don't share. Because if I can... Sh you know about this, right? Yeah. That yeah. if you open sharing with other computers... Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I tell people that all the time. If, if I'm using the internet and I see somebody on there, I try to find that person and tell them, hey, um, you know people can send you viruses through that? He said, no. Yeah. Yeah, people can send you viruses through stuff you share openly on your network. Well, it's kind of like the equivalent to having unprotected, unprotected sex. True. So, you know, you always wear a condom. You always wear a firewall. So... So um, you're gonna be gonna, scared half to you're death. Gonna, you're gonna get like AIDS or something from the from the. You're gonna the scare Starbucks, people off the internet. Starbucks Wi-Fi. Who wants space AIDS, people? Not <laughs> me. Uh, yeah. So so always be careful. You can scan any file you do download or you download from an email. It's always good to scan it. Um, definitely if you're if you're not paying for antivirus and you're for free, a lot of free softwares don't scan things automatically. You can oh, manually yeah. scan it. Paid just, ones usually can scan automatically. You gotta um, be careful. Um, 
One of the things you might want to do is if you get one of the free ones is to go into your task manager. If you have Windows 10, you can go into the startup and tell it to do it once you start your computer. Yeah. Which is one of the very fun functions. And you always want to make sure that your virus software is up to date. Oh, yeah. Because, again, like you said before, viruses and malware is always improving and updating and evolving. Well, if you're like me, you're not on the Internet all the time. I'm mainly on the Internet when I'm here at the library or with a friend at Starbucks or something. That's mainly the time I'm on. So, yeah, I check for updates. One of the many yeah. things you can do when you have your software, when you first start up, be like, check for updates. Yay! New exactly. updates. Little well, things. Well, it's not like the flu. Again, I'm going to use a bio biological metaphor, but the flu is always changing every year. Yeah, the flu, same, the same, flu same, shot same doesn't, doesn't yeah. always work, folks. Doesn't always work. Yep, exactly. Um, okay, so then, all, then another key is keep your personal information really safe. We mentioned oh, yeah. this kind of before about passwords. You want to keep your passwords secure. As you want to have possible. decently long passwords, but maybe with symbols and numbers and letters. Um, and you want to avoid using the same password for every single account. I use the same password for some different accounts, but I usually it's usually either because they have um, two-step verification, True. or it's because or it's because they um, they. Uh, uh, I don't really care about them, and if I, I got hacked in that account, it wouldn't really matter to me. Well, I mean, um, it, this is one of the things, I, as a volunteer at the computer desk here at the library, a lot of people aren't knowledgeable about, you know, emails and passwords and stuff, so they forget their password, so they forget their email. Yeah. So they have to recreate it over, and I try to tell them, My, are you sure it wasn't a virus or anything? Because they try the password they write down or remember. So we try to help as much people as we can. Oh yeah, my my sister had her Netflix account hacked. Ooh. Um, and That's someone changed right the password there. on her. Luckily, she was able to get it back because I'm still connected to her email. Ooh. Um, but yeah, like like a lot that happens, and it's it's really important to keep your personal information safe and to constantly be changing. Change your passwords regularly, definitely, but something you want to be really secure. Yeah. And again, earlier I mentioned two-step verification. A lot of, uh, like, Google provides this, and a lot of major, like, Facebook provides this, a lot of major social media sites provide it, and it basically means that, that every time you log in, definitely on a computer yes. that you haven't logged into before on, a new computer, it, it, it texts you a code onto your, to your phone, and then you need to type in that code. So it gives you basically a new password every single time you log into a new computer. That's, that's um, one of the big things is I have multiple uh, email accounts. Mm -hmm. I have at least three because one is specifically for my accounts for when I game. One is for business so I can get emails from my business, which thanks to this guy, I'm slightly employed again. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it's better to have more than one. Yeah. I'm being honest, more than one software email is superb. I mean, I don't use AOL anymore. I have I have twenty different emails in Google. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have different use people. Of them, four of them. I use Outlook and I use Google, but I also have a third one that I can't remember where yeah. I put it. Because when my my big boy hard drive crashed, I lost track of it. Yeah. I think it was through my teacher's internet or something, but. It's better to have different options so you can see the different things and then pick what you like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Knowledge and, is power, pretty much his words in a nutshell. Yeah, and so just like, uh, also like check your financial information regularly, check your credit card regularly. I don't really, I, I'm being honest to people, be safe on the internet shopping. Yeah. Just go to the store, buy a loadable gift card, and use cash. They can't trace you that way. Yeah, it's it's a simple. Te uh, I whenever I shop on the internet, I use a gift card. I do not use my credit or debit, and I don't bank online because of specific reasons. Is because I'm not that trusting of the internet just yet. Yeah, yeah, and and, um, and I don't necessarily go that extreme. I still use my credit card on the internet. Well, it, but I'm just mindful about what I where I use it, and I watch it regularly. I mainly bought anime from yeah. a place in the East Coast. I know they're a good company. My biggest concern was maintaining my money yeah. at the time. I haven't shopped online in like, I think five or six years. Yeah. Oh, well. It's been a while. Yeah. I'm more open to it now to doing it because I actually have a rapport with the company. And, you know, when you know people, you know, I got friends in Japan. I got girlfriends in China. It happens. Yeah. You know, you're going to meet somebody. You're going to learn about them. It, it's, it's the internet. Yeah. What can we do?
And then another thing, um, this is this is like more of a uh, for any reason. Even if like this one, this one's good for if your hard drive crashes for a mechanical yes. problem, whatever. Back up your files. Um, Restore Mac, points are always good too. Exactly. Mac makes this really easy with, with Time Machine. If you have an external hard drive or a solid state drive, you can back up to it regularly. Well, that's the fun um, part about operating systems is they can repair from restore points. Yeah. So let's say you get a brand new computer, you're fresh out of the box, you're ready to go, create a restore point right off the bat. And as I said before, this may not get rid of every kind of malware, yeah. but most malwares that someone's going to get, a restore point is going to fix the issue and it's going to bring you back to where what your computer was before. You you didn't even talk about registry problems. Sometimes some viruses mess with your registry. Yeah, well, that's because I haven't because I'm on a Mac. I haven't experienced registry issues in a long time. I did experience them like a long time ago. Well, I so, these out of the there's there's three main things that most of the viruses problems I've seen out of all the times. They mess with the BIOS, they mess with the registry, and they mess with the operating system. Yeah. Now the hardest one for them to do is to me mess with the operating system. Because, uh, let's see, what was it? Blue screen of death is usually the one that's involved with the operating system. But it doesn't always mean you have a oh. virus. Blue screen of death will mean, mean many different issues. No, blue screen of death. It doesn't death, necessarily mean a virus or a malware. Blue screen of death can mean many things. Yeah. Um, but what was it? Uh, oh, yeah. So registries are usually like when, you're, when your programs are how your programs are registered to your computer. You own them. Yes. So it's, basically it's telling the computer that you own that program. Let's see. When I got my uh, browser block one, the one that controlled my browser, they also changed my registry. So I couldn't go into a control panel. And they even took away my administrative privileges. Hmm. And I have a quirky little way of fixing it. If you guys have that question for him, let him know. I'll tell him how I did it. Yeah. I got around it and kept a lot of my files. Yeah, because because both, both it's just two of us, we haven't been able to check the social media. People could be posting questions. We don't know. But well, we'll I mean, check it at the end before we leave. Yeah, I mean... Um, because usually I have Q&A time. I don't have Q&A time this time, but we can still answer questions if there are any. Yeah, we'll get on um, for the next half hour and talk, answer some of these questions. And okay, so we're basically, okay, so yeah, we still install malware, keep your malware regularly, schedule scans, scan all the time. Malwarebytes um, usually does that regularly. You don't. It's more helpful. Keep, you want to keep your operating system current, but at the same time, I would recommend that you don't, don't upload. Don't update unless you necessarily have to, because a lot of times updating the first thing a new software comes out comes out there could be bugs. It's like when um, Windows 10 first came out. You got to yeah, know. Exactly. You're like, what's wrong here? Oh my God! I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, that was the first problem. Well, so research is power again. Like if there's a new update, look at what the new update contains. Um, if it contains security up security, if it contains just security, it's a security update. Then maybe go ahead and do it. Um, I always got annoyed because my Mac would constantly say, update me, update me, and I would just disable that. Um, and I update when I when I get around to doing the research on the new update and what the new update contains and why I should update. And if I need that update, if I feel like I don't need the update, if I feel like it doesn't contribute anything, then I don't do it right away. I wait until it seems like I need to update because of security issues or because I need the new the new software because things go And in the majority of the time, it's Windows Defender updates. Yeah. Most of the time it is. Because some but, I mean, also a lot of apps don't keep up with the updates, the operating system updates, and so if you update your operating system and your apps oh, haven't yeah. released an update for it I yet, forget that one. then you may have. I had this lives me a lot. I have an app that I use all the time, and now I can't use it because the operating yeah. system is updated, and it really annoys me. And that will happen more to people who are knowledgeable about computers. I don't think oh. that will happen to a regular person because they're usually using software that, that's more um, oh, not going to have an issue. It. But it happens with games a bet a lot. Um, I would think. Yeah, because um, I'm going to admit this, I'm a Skyrim junkie. Yeah. Okay, I've had every single time I brought my computer in, it wanted to update it. Because there's always, with a massive game like that, you're going to have updates all the time. Also, with my modding community part of it, too. Everything had to be updated. It was like, mainly my entire shift at the library sometimes, I would be doing nothing but updates. Hmm. But it was it was for it. Yeah. So. And again, I want to go back to Wi-Fi real fast again. Um, at home, you want to make your home, make sure your home Wi-Fi is secure. Give your home Wi-Fi a secure password. Use WPA2 two, two or WPA. Don't leave it unsecure. Trust me, there's always somebody who's going to take a little bit off the top. Or and, take the whole thing. And it, um, also, if you, if you, um, if you, this gets a little technical, but um, WEP, which is an encryption for Wi-Fi, is no longer that secure. 
So try using they, WPA2 or WPA if, you're, if your router WPAPK offers it. WPAPK2 is the new one. Um, Windows 10 is offering a new one up here pretty soon. If you buy new Nighthawk routers or gaming routers, they're offering a new version of it, which is, I think they said triple to quadruple yeah. encrypted to the point of where... Because there's software out there for people to just type in and then the, it goes nuts looking for a password. For, exactly. You know, literally takes like 10 minutes to find your password. Because you gotta be smart. It's about called. Um, it's called. Uh, usually, like uh, it's like kind of like slamming the door. It's just a hard approach to hacking, where they just like basically slam your your yep. program with every single possibility possible. They and do that's it. why that's why before we recommended having a long password or using numbers, letters, and keys because all those using any of those duplicates the amount of time. It's ridiculous. Like like if you have a a three letter password, it only takes like. A second to figure out a three-letter password, well, but if you have a twenty-letter password, it could take a uh, hundred years to figure out on the best supercomputer. So having like the more characters multiplies the length amount of time it takes for them to hard attack your com- your com- password with a hard attack. Let's see. Um, I think the cheesiest one for a password for a WP2K was for a pizza joint I used to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, the password was pizza. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's ridiculous. Um, well, I think in, back in the... I mean, I know your like, business, but... I think it was 2013. I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on that. But for a while, password was the number one password for yeah, a lot of people. password. It's pathetic. You, you can't and, do and, that. And don't use the same name as your router name either. Yeah, that yeah. just makes it worse because they're yeah. just going to type that in first thing. Yeah. They're going to be like, whoa, I didn't think of that. Yeah. And so, yeah, so make sure your Wi-Fi is always secure because someone could drive up to your house and they could start stealing your information from right outside your house if your Wi-Fi isn't secure. And so make sure your Wi-Fi is secure. Um, yeah, that's, that's the tips I have for that. Um, if you already have a virus, I'm going to mention a few tips. And possibly, we already mentioned some, but we're going we're gonna to mention a few more on what you can possibly do to get rid of it. Um, one, if you're on a Windows computer, Windows has an option called entering safe mode. Mm-hmm. And when you boot your computer up, I'm not going to go, and I don't think I have the, I forget the key I got to click. But when you boot your computer up, you click a certain combination of the key. And I can put this in the description below what combination that is. See. And I think maybe different between different versions of Windows. But it is. You click on you click on that key and it opens up this sharp, when you're, this is when you're booting your computer up. There's four different ones about Windows option. 7. I think Windows 7 was Control-Alt-Escape, if I remember correctly. And then yeah. it just changed each and every time because then you had the 8 and then you had the 8.1 and then now you got the 10, yeah. which I don't know. And, it, and it, safe mode puts your computer in like, um, it only runs the essential software of your Windows. So any software that isn't essential to Windows, it won't run. And it won't it won't run any startup software because a lot of times people have like software that automatically starts up when the computer starts up. Yeah. And so safe mode won't run anything that is supposed to start up automatically. Well, you're also supposed starts. to be able to access uh, safe mode through if your computer wasn't shut off normally. Like let's say the kid knocked the electrics cord out of the wall, yeah. and then you turn it back on. You can most systems have that option to turn into safe mode after that. And I think Mac has something similar to safe mode, but I I, I don't I have no idea I don't remember what it was. I thought I it was like it. Um, can't remember. It was like um, creator opening or something. Yeah, but it puts it in the bare minimum because because um, I know they have it because the only time I seen it done it is Skyler was operating in that safe mode when he was trying to do things. Yeah, um, isn't he always? And- <laughs> It's Skylar. He does all this cool stuff, and I never get to watch. Um, and then when you're in this like safe mode, um, or or if you if you you don't need to be in the safe mode to do any of the next steps, but um, deleting any any recent temporary files oh, yeah. or files that you downloaded since you've had the problem started occurring um, is it never never hurts. So it may not get rid of the issue, but um, your virus may have already hidden. It may have already put itself in the system core. But yes. deleting any temporary files or any files that you downloaded since you've had the issue will get rid of any simple spyware or any simple adware or any simple viruses or malware in general that infected your computer. Um, and then doing uh, malware scans. Um, malware scanners, once they usually when they find something, yes. they'll usually quarantine it and then they'll tell you, hey, we found something, do you want to delete it? And then you click yes and it will usually um, it usually does whatever need whatever is needed to completely clean that off your 
computer. Um, so you'll never have the issue again. Pretty much. Um, malware bits. It's right here on the paper. They, they suggest it as running that and scanning it on top of your uh, already existing malware. And so I have, I have times, I have like three different mail. We never mentioned this before, but I have three different malware scanners. What? So it's, it's good to have maybe more than one because one free software may, may have not been up to date. True. Or it may it may have not updated with the, with the latest version, or maybe missing a virus that that's out there, and so another one may have virus. So what I do when I when I run my routinely scheduled virus scan is I scan with one, yeah. and then scan with another one, and so I scan with multiple versions of virus scan uh, virus scans, and I think that's really important to do as well. Definitely, if you're concerned about this kind of thing, um, and and if you already have a virus, it, and, and the first one didn't find anything, or run another one, see if another one finds it. Um, because you never know. Because because all these these malware scanners, all they're doing is running off a database of what they think, what they know about. Pretty much. Right? So um, if and they're you competitors, don't update, right? Yeah, they're pretty much. Um, like AVG is a competitor against malware bit. So AVG may yeah. is, is constantly doing its work to get that keep that database up to date. But so is malware bits. And they're constantly doing their work to keep that up to date. And malware bits, since um, it may have missed something that AVG copped. Pretty and much. So you, so you don't ever know. You never um, know what's going to happen until you try. And to, uh, besides, like, you know, completely wiping your hard drive, replacing your hard drive, that's True. all we have really you can do to get rid of the viruses. Uh, after that, you're kind of done for. If it's, any, if it's anything stronger than, if, if, those two th if those steps can't get rid of it, then, then you're probably dealing with something really tough and you probably need to wipe your hard drive. And if, you, if you're really concerned, replace your hard drive. Um, you know, if you don't, if you don't have that, first try the backup. Hopefully a restore point will work. Yes. Um, but if it, you don't have a restore point or if it doesn't work. Well, that's why I always say when you get it fresh out of the box, you always at least create one restore point. Even if you get a new computer, you're supposed to create at least one restore point because I've worked with, many people's different devices and a restore point just helps you get the job done. Yep. Yep, so that's all we have. Uh, um, can you think of anything else? Not really. Yeah. Just I think we talked for way longer than I thought. <laughs> uh, we did an hour and 15, 17 minutes. Oh, whoa. So, so we probably should close out here soon. But before we close out, uh, I want to mention that Thursday uh, at 11 a.m., I'm doing an overview on Adobe Creative Cloud. So we're talking about Adobe Creative Cloud, kind of going over it. And I'm not going to go, it's not a tutorial on any specific Adobe software. Oh, no. It's just an overview on what Adobe Creative Cloud is and what they have to offer. And it's really cool because the library has Adobe Creative Cloud now. Mm -hmm. The past month or so, they've had, they have it free on the, their last remaining Mac that still works. That uh, one's out of order currently, but, but soon, hopefully, it will be back up and running. Um, but yeah, they have Adobe Creative Cloud free on that one computer, and, it, and it's really impressive. You can do all sorts of things from web design, web development, um, graphic design, animation, and what I do, editing, video editing. So I, I use Adobe, Pro, Adobe products for all my video editing, and uh, it's, the bundle is amazing. So I do Bundles? an overview on that. Oh. And then um, later, later in November, I'll actually do tutorials on Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So, and then maybe future Adobe products in the future. I'll do more specific tutorials in the future on that. And you then, wanna. Um, yeah, what? It helps the world. Knowledge is power. His words. Yep, exactly. And uh, then um, next Tuesday at six o'clock, well, Friday at, at three o'clock, I'm going over different editing softwares oh, yes. um, that are free and paid for, and the benefits. Um, of them and what what you need to do what you want to do. So I'll go over the pros and cons of different editing softwares, and if you can get away with using a free software or if you need to buy a software for what you want to do. Um, and then Tuesday, Q and Bert will be on Tuesday. Next Tuesday we're gonna do the six very o'clock. Six o'clock. Wow, you're you're killing me, man. <laughs> you don't like this evening stuff? <laughs> no, I don't mind the evening stuff. It's just. I need to ride home. You know the deal. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because the evening's better because on Tuesdays because they usually have like thing activities running all Tuesday long. So at night, that's it's when the true. Is free. It's true. Um, but yeah, so it, the Q the Q and Bert show um, will have Herbert and um, Mike Q, yes. and um, and then occasionally we'll have other hosts that may come on and we'll have guest stars occasionally. Hey, if you but, want him on, post it. <laughs> and I may be on sometimes. 
If you want uh, him to stick with me, that's what you decide. <laughs> and basically, or we'll give you a list of people you want to be on the show. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I know a couple of people who want to be on the show. Yeah. If you know anybody who, who wants to be on a show in general, Q and A Tech School is looking for guests, right. and so is Q and Bert looking for guests. So if you want to be on the show, let us know. If um, you live in the Mesa area and you're not going too far out of your way. Yeah. We don't want you coming from another country out of your way unless you live here. But I, we can stream you on Google Hangouts. I've done that we can for my do first that. episode. So we did some on Google Hangouts. So we can you can come in if that way. If you want that, we can do that. Yep. But don't go too far out of your way, folks. I don't want you to say, I'm so excited for you and Bert. Google chat. He just gave me the option. We'll do it. But don't yep. go out of your way. And then, um, so yeah, Google, Google so Q and Bert says, says, I'll address social issues. Um, so our first one, of course, we're going to do on politics Elections. and the election. Um, but we'll do episodes on the corruption in the prison system. Oh, God. We'll do episodes on the issue with homeless people in Arizona. And we'll do episodes on um We should just make that marijuana. the homeless people in America because, you know, yep. true fact. And we'll do episodes on other social issues and trending things that trend, you know, and so all sorts of things. And it'll kind of be like a, a lighthearted view on take on it. So... Be kind of friendly, kind of. We'll try to stay neutral. We do take a little bit of a liberal approach to things, but we'll still we'll still try to get a little bit of, little bit on both points of view, um, or at least we'll insult both points of view. Insult! Um, <laughs> Yay! And uh, so we're not going to be too too. Uh, uh, but there is going to be. A we're not going to be too violent or aggressive towards, towards, towards any one. Person. Yeah, definitely not violent or aggressive. We're going to try to say PG, um, but it is going to be an adult show, but very kid kind of themed. Friendly um, to it. Uh, we don't want you banning your kids from watching our show. Yeah, but I would still be careful because we are addressing social issues. So like things like the prison issue, we will we'll get kind of we'll, things drug will, oriented. Yeah, get kind of things. So you may you may want to be careful about some episodes, um, at least content. We'll label them. We'll label them when you know. And yeah. We'll we'll warn you if we're going to talk about prisons or not. Because yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Yep. It's going to happen. And the Q and Bert show will be live. And we will have packages, the pre-recorded packages of Herbert on the street. So Herbert will go out on the street beforehand and get interviews with people on the topic we're going to discuss. So I'm really excited about that. And that will be a really fun, entertaining show. And hopefully we can get you watching. And then hopefully we can get sponsorships. Because, um, all you know, right now, the, the, the entire project, I'm coming in my own proc- pocket. And, um, you know, in order to make this profitable, profitable, I need viewers like you to start watching I need to hit a thousand views before I can start making any money worth worth talking about. Um, but if you you know eventually I'll have build, build ways for you to donate. If you are that kind of fan who is really dedicated to to what we're doing, then you can donate money to us, and we're always happy to accept free money. So, yeah. so we, we'll take that. Who's gonna say um, no to free? Yeah, that exactly. free cheese platter you ordered. <laughs> but we would like to get advertising. So in the future, we're trying to work on sponsorships. If you know anybody, any local business that maybe has an online presence. Um, you know, we are looking for sponsors. Um, we, we are very, we get maybe 50 views right now on average. Um, so we're not, we don't have very big viewership right now, but we're growing quickly. And so if you are a person looking, uh, looking to sponsor someone, then you can catch on to us while we're early, while we're young and get on to us while we're young. And no, um, I'm not Fonzie. <laughs> um, yeah. So is there anything else? Uh, the Q, check our Facebook, keep watching our Facebook for more updates. Follow us on, on, on Twitter, uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube. You can look us up anywhere. We're Quanda Entertainment, uh, spelled right there, Q-O-N-D-A, Q-O-N-D-A, am I saying that right? Q-O-N-D. Yeah, Bert, yeah, we yeah. may have changed Sounds your name Sounds like I'm not saying it right, but I am. Uh, Bert, we may have changed your name to Rhonda. <laughs> um, no. And uh, again, I try to put these on SoundCloud as audio podcasts, but I've been forgetting... I mean, I've been doing that, but I've been, been forgetting. You've been trying. I've just been admit for- it. You've been trying. I've been forgetting that this also is going to be audio only. True. So I'm not sure. Like, hopefully we are covering our audio basis. True. Vi- audio totally. But there may be things on the screen <sighs> that, that SoundCloud isn't covering because, again, it's only our voices. Um, but but I am making it able to. For, you can go to our SoundCloud, Quanda Entertainment, and eventually you'll be on iTunes and from those two places, you can you can download our podcasts and listen to us on the go, um, in your car so we're here. or whatever. And I'll, I'll perfect that over time. And I'm also trying to get onto Youku, which is a Chinese Chinese version of oh. YouTube. 
So when I get on there, that's going to be really cool for my sponsors because I can advertise them to China, and that's over 2 billion people. I want Chinese YouTube, friends. YouTube is blocked in China. What? And so that's 2 billion people that can't really, without, without a VPN, which is complicated, Why are they, they can't really get access to YouTube. So with UQ, once I can get that hurts. Once I can get UQ up and running um, with with uh, with monetization, then I can cool. advertise to those two billion um, uh, potential viewers. Um, so I'm working on doing that, but the problem is the software uh, program is all in Chinese, uh, and um, on translating only goes so far. But anyway, we can just talk on and on all day long. Just keep following us for more information and follow Q and A Tech School. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Audio amigos going mute.